All right, guys, that's just an update video. If you're studying for the flow and level test that's coming up, um, there's a number of places where you can get some information. So uh, you can go onto my YouTube channel and inside, so you have to do this in the browser. You can't do this in the YouTube app. If you search in the YouTube app, it'll search all of YouTube and my stuff won't come up. But if you come onto the actual web page in your browser and then put in something like flow and hit enter, then it should come up with the labs that we've done so far. And then there should be a playlist. Here we go, right here. So I got, so far I got 45 videos in the playlist and they should match with the textbook. I'll show you where the textbook is in two seconds. Uh, and so this playlist starts off with a couple of videos from Smarter Every Day. And then from my, this guy is awesome. This is from um, Tony Kapalt. So it's under BTC Instrumentation. Uh, I will put a link to his, uh, his free textbooks. He's like my guru. If I could ever uh, embody somebody on the internet, it would be Tony Capalt. The man has like three different textbooks that are like 3,000 pages long. Um, his lab looks phenomenal. And uh, I've tried to you know, mimic him and I'll never catch up to him. He's got just phenomenal content. So I'll put a link to his uh, free online textbooks, which are better than mine, uh, and then his uh, YouTube channel as well. But it kind of follows through in the in the flow centers on uh, laminar flow versus turbulent flow, what's a rotimeter, um, Bernoulli's principle, and some examples of Bernoulli's principle, uh, viscosity, and then getting into differential pressure cells, the orifice, the flow nozzle, and the venturi, um, and then getting into some of the labs that we did in class, why you may want to make use of conditioning um, units to settle out the flow, uh, then some Venturi, and then following along with the textbook, uh, electromagnetic and vortex and ultrasonic and thermal mass flow meters, and finally the Cadillac of all flow meters, the Coriolis flow meter. So if you guys find some better, um, some better videos for flow or for level, please put them in the comment section below so that I can add them to the playlist. Okay, so that one is for, uh, for flow. Um, that is more extensive than the one for level, but let's look up the playlist for level. Okay, some of the labs that we did in class here. Uh, and then here's the playlist. Oh, not bad, 27 videos. Um, so there's enough videos here to make your eyes bleed on all the level and flow sensors that are out there. Again, starting off with my guru, Tony Capalt from BTC Instrumentation, um, going through the different ports, the high and low pressure ports of the DP cell and then going through a couple of labs that we did, and then the difference between open and closed level um, tank measurements, uh, the bubbler, looking at uh, LRV and URV, uh, and then looking at like uh, capacitive level sensors, your standard float switch, um, conductivity measurement, ultrasonic level sensors, um, the radar level me measurement, in case you have some foam on top of, the, uh, on top of your liquid, and what else have we got? Uh, the vibronic measure, measuring uh, level sensor. So again, if you have some cooler or better uh, videos, then please put them in the playlist, or sorry, put them in the comments below and then I'll add them to this playlist. And then hopefully we'll have all kinds of videos that you can, uh, they can watch. I mean, I'm, if I read my own textbook, I fall asleep. So I like to watch these videos and the flick, um, the, especially the stuff from um, from Anderson Hauser, it's absolutely phenomenal. Like if we go to, uh, where's the one for um, the DP cell? Where is that? The ones from Anderson Hauser are absolutely uh, amazing. So let's just take this one for the measuring principle for capacitance. Always has the same start, um, but then the visuals are, uh, are phenomenal. So these are my favorite videos on the internet for flow and level sensors. Awesome. And then like stuff like this for the ultrasonic, um, check out the ultrasonic video here. Hang on. Like they give you um, a three-dimensional image of the, of the unit and then show you exactly what's going on inside. It's awesome. It just shows you the piezoelectric sensors and then shows you an animation. Phenomenal. So you can read my textbook and fall asleep, um, or you can watch these uh, these videos. Maybe both will help you. Maybe if you're finding the answers for uh, 
the review questions. You might be able to quickly find them in the textbook, and I will show you where to find those guys. So again, those are on the, uh, the channel there. And again, in order to find each of those guys, you have to do um, a search within the browser, not in the app. Okay, so finding the, uh, the textbook that I'm working on, uh, you literally just put in Pete Free, and it comes up with myself and the gentleman from Utrecht that does ballet. We kind of look the same as well, which is kind of freaky. Um, but uh, it comes up right at the top here. So um, at least in Canada, it does. The website, the YouTube channel is right here. The website is right here. Click on this guy, and this is just a landing page for a Wix site that I created years ago. Keep going. And this comes to the, the main page here. So all of my, my instrumentation stuff, you go to topics and then to instrumentation. And the flow and level is within the intermediate instrumentation. So click on this bad boy right here. And this will bring up all the different topics that we're talking about in class. Uh, and the textbook that I'm alluding to is right here in PDF form. So you can click on here and then this, this will give you the PDF um, of what I've been using in class. This gives you like an image of each of the pages. And if you click right here, so I'm looking in the browser. I'm not sure if you're using an, if this will work in Adobe, but I look at most of my PDFs within the browser now. And so there's a, um, a table of contents here. So you can scroll through and find the different topics that you're looking for. So this guy starts off with the process control fundamentals. Um, and if you're looking for um, can like something like control loop terminology, then click on this and it should bring you exactly to the page that talks about control loop terminology and the examples that I've been using in class there. If you find um, anything that uh, as you're reading through where it's like completely wrong or it just doesn't make sense or it doesn't read well, uh, then tell me and put it in the comment section below or send me an email at vree.peter2 at gmail.com and tell me if I've missed uh, any of the sources. So if I've used uh, an image here, I've tried to provide the source and they should be like live links there. So you can click on that to get more information on each of the different topics. So as we talked about before, it starts off with process control, then it goes into um, standard um, analog signals. Again, I've tried to make links so that within the document, um, you can find each of the different things, but I'm always working on it. So if there's an, if there's an issue on anything, then tell me. Um, I'm not at the point where, it's still at the point where I can actually print it out and be happy with it. Um, so I'll need your help to kind of clean it up. Okay, so maybe you're looking for something on um, three to 15 PSI. So you click on this guy and it should have uh, a background on the 3 to 15 PSI and why you're going to make use of that signal there. Okay, stuff from uh, 4 to 20 will be there as well. And again, there is the link right there for uh, Tony Capult's awesome textbook there. Uh, so I made use of a couple of his images in there as well. Specifically, you guys are looking at flow and level. So let's go to level first, so level fundamentals. And if we open this bad boy up, then, hello then all the different types of um, level sensors should be in here. So this is kind of the synopsis here. And then um, we're looking at site class. Then we're looking at the DP cell, the bubbler method. So all of these guys should have, um, on, like for the DP cell on, or any different type of sensor that I'm talking about, I've tried to provide an application for what you're looking at, then a YouTube link to a decent video, and then a source for more information. So again, if you have better videos or better sources that you found, then tell me and then I'll update the PDF as we go along. I'm usually working on it every, uh, every month, so check back and a couple of months from now, it'll have a little bit more information or it'll be cleaned up a little bit. Okay, stuff like uh, the bubbler is in there. Um, if we're looking for um, float and displacement methods, they are there, the rotary paddle, Level sensor for solids is there as well. And again, like here, I'm, I don't have a decent source, so I need a source to put in there. And again, if you find any issues with the applications that I'm talking about, then tell me. Okay, that's a level. Keep going down and then you should find uh, flow. So each chapter will start off like this. So this is your flow measurement fundamentals. 
And then within here, I haven't uh, done the live links yet, but I'll try to update that soon. And within here, I try to go over stuff like the Reynolds number, uh, laminar versus turbulent flow, Bernoulli's principle. And again, I've tried to provide the YouTube links and the sources. And then for all the different flow sensors that we've been talking about in class, like the orifice plate, again, there should be an application, a YouTube link, and a source for each of those guys. For some reason, I must have grabbed this image but for, forgot to put the source down here. So if you find this one, then tell me and I'll, I can update this as well. I'd really like to have a, a source for each of the different images um, that I've kind of stolen over the, uh, the years. So, but I've tried to make use of stuff like this where it shows uh, the DP cell and that with the DP cell, that'll give you your volumetric flow rate. Um, but in order to make it at more accurate, you're probably gonna have an RTD there as well. So if you find really good uh, diagrams like this, then tell me and I'll add it in there. So that was the orifice plate. Then we have the Venturi tube. What else have we been talking about? The positive displacement uh, meters, like uh, the oval gear flow meter, right? So all of these guys are here. Uh, and another great uh, source for, for stuff is instrumentationtools.com. Awesome, awesome site. And I'll put, uh, I'll put all of the really good links that I found um, below. But as you go through the, the textbook here, you should be able to find those as well. Okay, once we're done, the, the, the basics on process control and the signals uh, and the flow and level sensors, then we're finishing up with uh, PNID diagrams right here. So again, this guy will give you the basics. I've tried to kind of clean this up so it's just the basics here. So it goes through all the, the different types of symbols and how to read them. Then we've got some examples there the chart that corresponds to each of those different um, terms, and then the answers. And again, I've missed the link where I grabbed this from, so I'll try to, uh, to update, that, update that soon. Okay, so I tried to put in as much as I could uh, with a number of different examples. Uh, this is an awesome site as well. Instrumentation Toolbox uh, is phenomenal as well. There's some great sites out there to get uh, so much information on instrumentation and all the different types of sensors that are out there. But this gives us a good graphical representation of uh, a level indicator and transmitter that goes out to a, a, a high and a low level alarm, then goes to our indicator and controller. You'll notice that they're all part of the same loop as we talked about. Then it goes over here to a different loop to our flow loop. This is a flow indicator and controller with a different uh, number for the flow loop. And that goes is getting its signal from the flow indicator and transmitter. And this one here looks like the orifice plate. So we got to go through all the level and flow sensors first so that you understand what I'm talking about or what I'm referencing when I say the orifice plate. And then previously, like I think this was like week three or week four, we did a current to pressure transducer. So this guy sends a signal from the orifice plate, four to 20 signal over to the controller, then sends the signal to the current to pressure transducer uh, which sends a 3 to 15 PSI signal to our big ass valve here that allows more or less flow to or from the tank. Cool, eh? So that's your uh, your PNIDs. Then after that, this is a disgusting amount of information in this course. Uh, once we're done the PNIDs, then I try to cram as much of uh, intrinsic safety into your head. So intrinsic safety is a way to keep uh, your current and voltage levels low enough that you're not going to cause an explosion. So it's a way that you don't have to make use of um, explosion proof fittings when you're doing your instrumentation uh, circuits. So examples of those um, go through the fire triangle um, and then different classifications of uh, hazardous materials. And then uh, it should go through uh, the three different types of ways you can keep things safe. So explosion proof fittings, pressurization, and then intrinsic safety. And within the intrinsic safety, there should be a number of diagrams to hopefully make things clear that we're trying to keep things at a low voltage and low current and low wattage so that um, we're not gonna have an explosion take place within the hazardous area, okay? Once we're done with the intrinsic safety, whew, 
Then we got to talk about uh, grounding and shielding. And so this will go over uh, what causes electrical noise. So the different ways that you're going to have noise that gets created, whether it's through induction, whether it's through capacitive coupling, uh, radio frequencies that are out there, uh, lightning strikes that create different uh, potentials within the circuit, uh, or the fact that we may have a ground loop. So we'll discuss a ground loop at the end and that we've done all this work to try and keep our signals accurate and use the appropriate sensors and everything, but then all of a sudden we've created a ground loop where we think that two units are at the same potential, uh, but they're not, and all of a sudden we have a current that flows on our signals or on the shield. So the last thing we'll talk about um, is shielding of, uh, of units. So that is uh, right here. So using different shields, whether it be an aluminum shield or a braided shield and the uses for each of those guys and why you might wanna make use of twisted pairs uh, for your instrumentation, just to reduce any noise that's there. So we'll go through in the last week uh, of intervening, why you want to use twisted pairs, why you wanna make use of a shield, and then when you make use of a shield, why you want to um, tape it out in the field and then ground it back at the panel. All right, guys, I think that's uh, about it. Hopefully you enjoy this, uh, this textbook. If you have any, um, if you have any things that I've omitted, then tell me. If you have any changes to the, to the textbook, then tell me. And with the flow and level sensors, in particular with those playlists, if you find some good videos or, uh, or links, then tell me and we'll place them in the comment section below. And hopefully together uh, we'll build on what I found previously. All right, guys, thanks very much. We'll see you uh, on the next video.